Hi guys, Brown here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2019 career mode. Here today for part 28 at the Canadian Grand Prix. You see on screen now is the um, R&D and the two upgrades we did in Monaco. I've only they're on the way. They're not going to be here for this weekend, but they will be in France. Um, but if you, ha if you missed the last video in Monaco, check that out before you see this one. There's going to be spoilers for that later on in this video. So if you haven't seen that, do go and watch that. Um, but into qualifying here in Canada, and it started off dry, but it is meant to rain. Not to the extent of the full wets, but definitely getting that way is well, well into the inters probably that changeover point between the inters and the wets but on our first run then in Q1 we make a massive mistake we go too deep into the chicane and we actually went purple in that first sector so I probably could have um, carried on but I backed out and then a lap later I've gone again um, in terms of Canada I love this track this is my all time favourite F1 track on the calendar see there we went p9 we slipped down to p12 but we're still through and into q2 where the rain as i just mentioned has kicked in and you can see very slippery out there into the final chicane we go to start our first lap actually no just to end our first lap sorry <laughs> we cross the line and we go fastest and with pace like that if the rain stays how it is we only slip down a little bit to P5 Charles Leclerc getting knocked out and now into Q3 you can see it's probably at that point as I was mentioning between Inters and the full wets but as we come up to line to complete our first run we do go fastest and I think we are well in with a shot of getting pole position which should be our first pole of our career if we can do that, you can see this is our final run, Hamilton's gone fastest, we've gone purple in the first sector, now heading towards the end of the second sector, and we cross the checkpoint line, whatever you want to call it, but it's only green, so we set a personal best in that middle sector, and now we begin the climb up the final straight then on the DRS that isn't of course activated in wet conditions, so as we head into the final chicane um, try not trying to avoid the wall of champions that we ended up in the barrier in last season as we crossed the line and we're not going to get our first pole it's only P2 Hamilton's on pole and it's literally by 23 thousandths of a second but what happened the last time we were on the front row of Hamilton we went on to win can it happen again who knows but let's get into this Canadian Grand Prix are always packed to capacity it's a country that has given us the likes of Gilles and Jack Villeneuve the thrilling Grand Prix of 79 of 98 and of course 2011 they love their motorsport in Montreal and we absolutely love coming here if you want flat out racing, you've come to the right place this weekend as it's full throttle for 59% of this 2.7 mile circuit, peaking at around 210 miles per hour going into the final chicane. But that speed requires discipline and there are more than a few close walls here just waiting to punish drivers with a heavy right foot. Anthony Davidson also joins me in the commentary box today. Let's start with the new Alfa Romeo driver. What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. With the race minutes away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position and Brown completes the front row. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Gasly, Sebastian Vettel and Bottas, Butler, Norris, Giovinazzi and Lucas Faber, Magnussen, Holkenberg, 
Lance Stroll and Leclerc, Albon, Russell, Roman Grosjean and Sergio Perez. Kubica and Daniel Ricciardo fills the last spot on the grid and now it's time to head down to the track. So the strategy, it was um, soft, soft, medium, but I want to be able to push at the end of the stint if something happens. So we're going to be putting on the mediums in the middle of that stint, but let's go to the Canadian Grand Prix then. It's lights out and away we go. I think we need to get Hamilton off the line and we haven't there. And we're still P2. You can see Gasly going wheel to wheel with Max Verstappen into turn two. As he goes flying through there, Hamilton is off like an absolute rocket then. And there's Gasly still defending Verstappen. He has got ahead of him now. But it's Hamilton, we're second, Gasly third. And it is Verstappen fourth. And then I think it is the two alphas after that. As we head into the second DRS, everyone filing through. You can see that. I think that was Butler. But you can just see the gap. That Hamilton's already pulled. He was so strong. This is the one thing I kind of feared. If I couldn't have got Hamilton at the start, which we didn't, then I thought he would just blitz away, and that's what he's doing on this opening lap in this Canadian Grand Prix. This is a replay of the start from my point of view. You can see I tried to go to the outside. We actually go on the grass. Um, I probably should have done the switch back, tried to go to the inside, try and be at that a little bit more aggressive. And we probably would have got past there, but who knows, we did what we did and we can't change it now. But you can see Hamilton's flying away, but nothing really was happening, everyone was kind of in that dirty air window. It was a very kind of realistic race in a sense that everyone's so close, but powerless to actually get closer to make a move but as we skip on a couple of laps and Lando Norris is going wheel to wheel which I think is Lucas Weber and Lucas Weber just put, slammed on the brakes coming out of the final chicane but he's not done with Lando yet he's maybe going to go to the inside no he isn't he thinks better of it and Lando Norris has got an absolute train behind him as we skip on and the two alphas are going wheel to wheel these two just can't stop battling can they as into the pits now comes um, Max Verstappen and he goes onto the set of the softs and now we're piled into the pits to try and get the undercut done on Lewis Hamilton you can see I actually turned into the final corner and turned out of it it's kind of one of them I was planning to do whatever the Mercedes didn't do. We go on to the set of the mediums. And now there's a massive back um, pack there. Can we beat them out? Yes, we can just. And now we just need to push as hard as we can on this lap. And see if we can beat Lewis out of the pits. We actually got quite close to him. As we skip on a lap, here he is into the pits. Mercedes put him on another set of the soft and away he goes at a very quick stop. And now I kind of like the camera angle inside the pits and you can see like the track. And now you can just about see as he comes to the end of the pit lane pass we go. But of course we've got to do the chicane of turns one and two as there is Hamilton. And we haven't done enough to beat the Mercedes out maybe another couple of seconds another second that could have been anything no that could literally be fractions that he's beat us out by and you can see the alphas are leading this race but that is because neither have pitted and lewis is just flying away again though but he is on the soft tire so he does have the tire advantage which i'm not really worried about at this point in the race for the fact that we'll have the tire advantage at the end because he'll have to either go on to the mediums and the hards and it's more likely he'll go on the mediums so and we're going back to the soft no matter what so we we will have that pace advantage as battles here this is um sebastian vettel getting past devon butler in the renault and now this is valtteri bottas going for it on max verstappen 
there wasn't really a much overtaking in this race so editing this was very hard to try and find stuff to kind of show you in this race as there goes Bottas to the outside of Verstappen that then goes to the inside and now back to the outside and he's gone him around the outside that is a lovely move by the alpha of Bottas as now skipping on we have caught the back of Lewis Hamilton his, his soft tyres have died and we've managed to catch him up and we're closing on him here we're closing, we're closing, we're closing, we're closing, we're closing we're going to go to the outside, we're going to fly past him and into the lead of the Canadian Grand Prix but Hamilton dives into the pits and now we have to push as hard as we can with nurse these mediums as far as they kind of can go and now we just need to push and use every ounce of life that, ha that we have left in them as Hamilton is on the set of the medium compound tyre so we will have the pace advantage as he comes out the pits and he's got a massive pack in front of him of the Alphas and Verstappen and I think even Gasly may be caught up in that as we skip on five laps that's how many extra we went compared to Hamilton and we're going to come into the pits to put on the soft tyre and let's see what we can do can we win this race we're in it's going to be tough Hamilton's already gone through the picture I do believe at this point that is kind of how much time we got by staying out but that time is going to come creeping down now as we go gun for the Mercedes through goes Bottas he's on making his stop it's gone on to the set of the softs as free you may have seen there this is Vettel and Gasly going wheel to wheel Gasly still there on the inside Vettel on the soft Gasly on the medium Vettel has the tyre advantage out of turn two and does take that position ahead of Gasly but skipping on Vettel is coming under pressure again Gasly's back down the inside at turn two and yet again Vettel has the advantage but this time Gasly's not doing it, giving away anything and he does actually get him here does Gasly as this is Max Verstappen now pressuring Vettel after Bottas has actually got Vettel as well at this point here comes um, Max Verstappen round the outside of Sebastian Vettel who of course replaced Vettel at Ferrari Verstappen and he's passed Vettel just about there he's not going to give an inch and he is past now as we're skipping on we were just eating away at Hamilton's time and we're getting closer and closer here into the hairpin and now out of the hairpin and we're closing in on him can we get him we're closing we're closing we're closing we're still closing but we're not quite close enough to do anything into that corner we're on lap 31 so just five laps to go but we get we're a lot closer we're going to go to the outside of Hamilton we'll have the inside line for the for turn one and we are going to take the lead of the Canadian Grand Prix but, and with just four laps to go does Hamilton have an answer and he does on the final lap he goes to the inside we've gone wide to avoid an incident and we're going to head up to the line and we're going to win in Canada it's our second win of our career our second win of our season perhaps controversial but who cares we've won the, be the best Grand Prix on the calendar in my opinion and what a way to bounce back after Monaco well, I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on the track was today, speed. I know it sounds like an obvious thing to say, Crofty, but fast cars win races, and we saw that today with our winner. Here come today's winners. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently. It's clear to see that they've put in the work, and they should be proud of the victory they secured here.
So that has been your Canadian Grand Prix for Season 2. We've won it from Hamilton from Bottas. This is how the standings is looking. We're now three points behind Charles Leclerc. We're back close to him again after that DNF in Monaco. Verstappen now is behind us in the championship. We actually jumped Verstappen this time. In the constructors, we're so close. We're not quite close enough to those in front of us. Um, we're still losing our rivalry with Charles Leclerc, unfortunately. Um, but we're winning it with Gasly, so that's a positive as well. In terms of the RMD points, we now have a healthy chunk. But I don't think I may do any upgrades for the fact we'll have those upgrades coming in for the French Grand Prix next time out. Um, Red Bull likeness at the minute and of course we have that all important contract renegotiation after the French grace which we really need because it keeps telling us to win but since I've realised that with one two out of the three races which I don't know maybe psychologically it's done something to me in terms of these races but I don't know <laughs> we'll have to wait and see these are the transcripts if you want to pause and feel free to read them we actually have the best car in terms of the R&D we definitely don't I mean we we did but everyone from between the Red Bull us at Red Bull Ferrari Mercedes and Alpha we're all literally in the space for a couple of pixels really but that has been it for this episode if you enjoyed it hit the like button don't forget to subscribe as well um the next episode may be out either on wednesday or sunday it depends really when i get it edited um but until the next t time out which will be at the french grand prix at paul ricard goodbye <laughs>